Okay. By the way, one um, just a, one thing about our recording um, and depending on how others feel about it, notice that in our gallery view, we don't record people who happen to be off camera. So we can't really see how many people are there because there are some people who are driving or whatever and aren't on camera. So I don't know if that's a setting that we can change if it seems useful. Uh, I'll, I'll check it out. I kind of think it's not a setting we can change, but I'll check. Okay, great. So we're here on June 1st, 2022. Uh, we're in the, I'll let uh, Dr. Tren drop in here. So we're here uh, June 1st, 2022. This is our second meeting coming out of our six week experiment. And we're um, focused in this cycle on um, aligning and structuring, federating and resourcing. So we came through a little six week experiment to see if there was a group of people that had the energy and the right DNA to see if we can carry forward. We came through that. So now we're focusing on, on moving into some more pragmatic structuring. Um, so, so welcome everybody, uh, Dr. Tran, welcome, great to see you here. So the question I was going to start in breakout rooms with, but I think we have a small enough group just to uh, dialogue on, is um, when we say some of these words, sometimes they don't, they don't mean things. Um, so one of, the, one of the interesting questions that came up with that I think would be good for us to chat about today um, is what do we mean by decentralization and federation? What are we trying to get at when we say those words? What do they actually mean? What are the benefits of them? Why do we say them? Why do we think they're important? Um, later in the meeting, we'll be, we'll be talking about some different ideas and structure and logic around that. Um, I thought we'd just start off with a, with a little dialogue about that. Um, first, just a rough, uh, rough outline for today. We're going to get updates from a few people on action items and um, different groups that met over the last week to advance things that we uh, brought up as action items in our last meeting. Um, we're going we're gonna to look at actually some more concrete ideas around um, decentralization and federating, both in the abstract and in the specific, and looking at some of the structural work that's been done to date. And then that's moving us towards, um, towards getting each of us as individuals working together in small, small groups according to our particular interests and passions, and then getting those small groups federating and coordinating and making and keeping commitments with each other. So that's kind of where we're going today. And um, rather than setting timelines on that, I kind of want to just see how quickly we can get through it. A lot of us have done a lot of work on this in the past. Um, so, so the quicker we can kind of move through some of these minimum viable steps, uh, the better. So. Beautiful. So let, let's just open with a little dialogue on um, what do we mean by decentralization and federation? What do those words mean? Why do we think they're important? Um, and over to you, Wendy. Um, just briefly, um, I don't think we get recorded what's actually in the breakout rooms. This might actually be some interesting content. I'm, I'm actually I'm actually not going to do uh, breakout rooms uh, since we have a small enough group. So let's just, we'll just do some some dialogue here together. No, it's it's a it's a it's a point of process as well. So when we do do them, and you do want the content, you'll need to ask for people to specifically record it because I don't think that yeah. happens nor normally. And yeah. just be aware of that if you've got something that you really want people to not just say we think we said. Beautiful. Thank you, Wendy. Appreciate it. So, uh, Pete, do you want to get the, would you be willing to get the dialogue rolling around this? I know this is an area of passion and thought for you. Do you want to offer up some opening thoughts? Um, yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Jordan. Uh, you might want to rename yourself back to Jordan. Um, I'm just always meditating until 1235. Could be. Uh, uh, Jordan and I and a few other folks um, uh, spoke about this at, at length yesterday, and I've been writing up some stuff. Uh, we had we had a great conversation, and uh, those notes and recording will get published in a day or two. Um, uh, really simply, I, I use the word sovereign. It doesn't have to be that word. Um, and and actually, I'm not really attached to the words. I'm attached to um, the the concepts. But um, the way I think of it, uh, autonomous. Uh, 
entities, uh, either an individual or uh, either a person or a group of people um, can be a sovereign. They can decide what to do uh, with themselves, with their time, how they interact with other people, what their principles and purpose are. So one sovereign um, is separate from another sovereign. And, and I think it's probably okay if people are parts of several sovereigns. Uh, I myself am part of several sovereigns. But when I'm when I'm working within one sovereign, um, you know, I have this, the cap on for that sovereign, and I'm thinking the thoughts that sovereign needs needs me to think. Um, so that's kind of a, a core unit of federation and decentralization. So then the the next idea is that um, you have, we have many sovereigns, and instead of being all one group of 10 or 50 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or a million people, maybe we'll be more smaller groups than that, um, groups of two or three or five or 10 or, or maybe 100 or maybe 200 um, people um, in a sovereign. So then to get a big job done, you would need to reach out to that network of sovereigns and cooperate with them, um, maybe compete with them, um, hopefully not too much, um, but uh, the basic idea is that cooperation consists of talking about what's happening with my sovereign, the external view of that, not necessarily internal view, the external view of what's happening. You know, here are the projects that this sovereign is working on. Here's our core principles. Here's our value statement. Um, here's how it's going. Here's the things that we need. Um, and working with other sovereigns uh, through commitments. Um, hey, if I do this part of the project, can you do that part of the project in your sovereign? Um, if, if I managed getting the content of a website together, can you get it up on the web um, through magic I don't know how to do? Those two sovereigns can cooperate, they can coordinate, um, they can decide what to do uh, with agreements. So one of the things that does is it simplifies the, the information exchange between the sovereigns um, to get something done like creating content for a website or getting a web, website content up on the web. There's a lot of bits and by, bytes and bobs and details. Um, it doesn't have to be on the web. It could just as easily be um, uh, we want to change our local food system to be uh, more regenerative. Um, that would be another great thing. Um, hey, I know how to do um, plumbing and water systems. Um, can you help me with the, the solar panels? Um, uh, together, I think we've got solar panels and water systems covered, but we don't know anything about um, bacteria and, and my, microbiomes in the soil. Um, third sovereign, can you help us do that? So, um, so then the sovereigns together are coordinating. They're decentralized. Decentralized means that instead of one group doing everything kind of, um, you've taken the, the larger task apart and you've decentralized it. Instead of one central organization, you've got a decentralized organization that's accomplishing things. And then um, if you think of that, uh, an, another way to describe that cooperation or that working together is as a federation. A feder we, we have federated. Federated means that we're doing things together. Um, uh, one of the things, um, so one of the things that came out of yesterday's work session was that I'm trying to like, like really minimize the number of rules that you need to play that game together if you want to think of it kind of like a game um and i think there aren't many rules i think we went through just just now we went through about half of them you know sovereigns are fairly small and they manage their own affairs um you know there's a few more simple rules i think keeping this the rules simple makes it so that the decentralization can involve, that the federation can involve more sovereigns. Um, uh, right above that layer of the really simple rules, you start to need some practical stuff, like, um, like maybe, uh, maybe you want one network of sovereigns that has that, that where everybody has a, a core value. Um, uh, and we say, 
you can be part of our network uh, as long as you've got these couple core values in your core value statement. And if you're a sovereign that doesn't have, you know, some of those core values that we believe in, more power to you, but maybe you're not part of this network. So there are some there's some interesting layers right above just the decentralization part um, that are really important. Um, how do you explain decentralization, federation, sovereigns? Um, hey, uh, I, I don't like the word sovereign or I don't like the word federation because it has a political meaning where I live. Um, can we call it something else? You know, there's um, what what happens when a bunch of sovereigns start cooperating together and they, they're trying to gang up and beat up other sovereigns or something like that, right? Um, there's a whole bunch of that, like right above the layer where I'm trying to figure out the just the core um, stuff that's super important. And, and we've started talking about that in some ways. And I'm kind of leaving that for, for maybe the future and, and for other people to think about. Uh, too. So um, that's uh, I, actually one more one more quick thing while I've got the floor. Thanks for thanks for your attention. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I don't know that this is going to mean have a lot of practical meaning for folks here, but uh, uh, I, 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 there's a big example of this pattern in the world. And um, it's in instructive to look at how it's working and maybe how it's not working and what happens at scale. Uh, so one of the examples I've been using is the open source movement, I'll call it. Um, and if you think of open source, uh, uh, lowercase o, lowercase s, lowercase m, the open source movement, everybody doing open source, that's kind of roughly equivalent maybe to the meta project, um, lowercase m, lowercase p. Um, there's, there's something that's just a little bit more organized than a movement of all the people who are possibly doing any kind of open source with any kind of rules. Uh, there are two organizations I, I like to highlight. One is called uh, the Open Source Initiative, I think. Uh, another one is called the Free Software Foundation. Both of these are essentially nonprofits that are super interested in the idea of open source. Um, uh, and it's instructive kind of to see how that worked out. Um, uh, I think of OSI or FSF as kind of the Lionsburg of the open source movement. Um, and kind of like we've already talking, started talking about Lionsburg and the meta project with capital M, capital P, and maybe a meta project with lowercase m and lowercase p. Um, the same thing has happened there where F FSF um, has a couple uppercase names that they use for open source and OSI has some uppercase names that they use. Um, and people get passionate about the difference between OSF or FSF and OSI. Um, they have arguments, um, they have a lot of agreement. Um, uh, but in, in a way what happens is Free Software Foundation or Open Source Initiative kind of bless the ways that people interact to do open source. Um, a lot of that is has to do with the licenses, the copyright licenses you use to go along with uh, open source. Um, copy, the open source copyright licenses uh, are kind of a hack on top of the legal requirements of copyright. Um, so around the world, when you make something, it's copyrighted and it belongs to you and other people can't steal it, basically. They can't use it without paying you or, or at least having you agree to it. Um, open source licenses add some rules to that. Hey, you can actually borrow my code. You can use my code as long as, you know, and then you follow the rules, right? As long as you give it to other people kind of in the same way that I've given it to you is kind of the gist of it. So the variations in that, the complexity of those agreements though, and there's many, many different kinds of open source uh, copyright copyrights, um, make this kind of tension between FSF and OSI um, tension and cooperation. Um, so I don't want to get too far down that, that path, but I also want to say that there are patterns. I, I think there are probably other patterns too. It doesn't have to be tech necessarily or, or software, but um, we do see cooperation and decentralization 
at scale in, in the real world already. Um, and I think we can borrow some patterns from that and talk about it and use them as examples of what to do, what not to do, um, how, you know, how we can move faster, farther forward. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Pete. That was great. Um, moving one, one step beyond um, what Pete said, uh, building in a couple of the elements that I think will help our dialogue. There's, there's certain kind of fundamental elements. So, so one thing that I think um, Pete brought in is this idea of the individual. And I think one of the core principles, um, Marianne, I think dropped this into the chat, but like that idea of sovereignty and autonomy obviously starts with the individual. So there's certain networks that, that are formed where, um, let's say if Judy or Marianne or someone comes in, they're seen primarily as an agent of an organization rather than as a sovereign individual. So I think that's one of the, the really core first principles here when we try to build community to accomplish something at scale is recognizing that, that sovereignty kind of begins with the individual, not vice versa. From that um, idea of the individual, then individuals can make voluntary commitments to work with each other um, in different configurations. We've been calling those things like pods, circles, sovereigns, um, but those are basically just small groups of people. Maybe there's a best practice that those are a minimum of three and a maximum of 12 or 15 before they start to get a little bit too big and maybe should be, be split. Um, so you have that core kind of teamwork principle. Um, and then you can keep you can keep ratcheting that up into ever greater levels of voluntary cooperation. So like Pete mentioned, so let's just say that um, we're all here as individuals. Uh, Kevin Jones, for instance, is, is participating in a, a circle or a sovereign that's a local watershed project. My understanding is he has five to six people that are working on that. That's like a perfect example of a voluntary collaboration among five or six individuals that's completely sovereign, autonomous, self-directed. And then what's, what's happened is, as Kevin's worked to build that project, he said, okay, hey, we need to start building marketplaces. And thankfully, some other people in the network had, had worked to build some marketplace software. Then he said, okay, we could really use a wiki to organize our knowledge. And thankfully, some other people in the network had worked on that. And so you start to have the, the common shared infrastructure. So I'll drop that in there. It's like there's a, there's a shared actual structure and infrastructure that essentially each of the sovereigns needs in order to accomplish its goals. And you can kind of decide how that gets structured, but those are a couple of things. Then Pete mentioned the, com the, the uh, comment of a federating, federation or the act of federating, which is if there's something bigger than a local watershed or there's significant things that need to be accomplished, then you need to start looping multiple sovereign autonomous units together uh, to begin making and keeping commitments. So it's, it's basically a model of bottom-up, autonomous, self-directed, voluntary collaboration and service of overarching goals or objectives. Jerry, for some reason, I feel a little, a little called to invite, uh, invite your perspective. I know you've been building brains and ideas around this for a long time. Do you have anything you'd like to share with the group? Um, I like the clarity of Pete's exposition and the intentions of the group. And it feels like uh, this conversation is sort of rolling along. I don't know what I have to add to it at this moment, but thanks, Jordan. It feel, feels generally aligned with your, your frameworks. Okay, great. Marianne, you've been dropping some wonderful things in the chat. Would you, would you like to speak some of those out verbally for anybody that's not following the chat? Um, I'm just extremely passionate about your vision, Jordan, which is why I show up here whenever I can. Um, in the past year and a half, I've really felt that there's so many people on the same wavelength around the globe. Um, and I, I really want this to be, to be successful because we're also running out of time. Not that we need to rush, but to slow down and all that. But I just really want to make sure as we build this, we represent everybody else as well. I am concerned it's, you know, 
but it has to start somewhere. So of course it's going to represent North American culture, et cetera. But we also need to make sure, you know, all different races and cultures and you know countries and continents and all that is is there. I've mentioned it before, and I'm not sure, you know. I, I, there's an outreach coming up. I feel that, right? We're going to be doing outreach, but before we can add in millions of people, we need to get structured and organized and figure out how we actually going to manage all that. So that's kind of where where I'm sitting right now. Yeah, thanks, Marianne. Yeah, we're we're um, we're lucky enough that over the uh, Kilo, go ahead. No, please, please finish what you were saying. We're lucky enough. Um, I think we're we're over rep, we're we're far overrepresented on diversity than what it looks like as far as people who can show up on a twelve thirty Pacific time call on a Wednesday. Um, so over the last couple of years, you know, we've we've tried to be very intentional with. Uh, so so I think there's um, your point is really great, and then also that needs to be reflected structurally and and how the community works together, because obviously there's a lot of people that don't have the luxury of being able to take a couple hours to show up on a call like this or different time zones, different continents. And then for anybody that's not aware, we have in, in parallel a couple of weeks behind this um, group of, of uh, people in Kenya as well that are, are working on going through the, through the same kind of process. Um, and so, and then I think um, we have, uh, intention here probably as, as soon as we can but let's just say over the next six weeks or so we'll want those calls functioning in kind of each time zone and area and culture of the world and then the process for for tying those together sharing out at regular rhythms the learnings and, and perspectives um, so so thanks for and then and then the last thing is i think there's um like you said i think that concept of it needing to start somewhere is, is something right so it's like for whatever our inadequacies are we're here um, we've we've all built some things and and so i think once we get through a little starting point and what you just said is really important the next round of of outreach that comes is really important so um we've put a little bit of thought into in the past and we can do some thinking as a group on probably segmenting out who everybody is how everybody can feel represented um for instance even if you have representation for every geographic area there's people who are minorities of a cultural or religious belief in a geographic area who wouldn't feel represented probably. So there's a multi-dimensional representation there that um, we've, we've tried to kind of think through and I, I, you'd be a wonderful thought partner for that. So uh, no, maybe in the just next- respond to that? Yeah, yeah. Because it's not just about being generous and make, making people feel like they're welcome. It's that they actually have incredible insights that we would totally miss if we didn't have yeah. them as part of this. So that's yeah. just as important, if not more. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's never learn so much as when you get out of your get out of your bubble for sure. Uh, Kilo, then Pete. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, so I've been I came in here with a kind of a consideration around leadership, and I think that what's dropping in is also around that question. And I'm hoping that it it fits. So let me, I apologize in advance if I'm not articulate. I'm also a little under the weather. But so the question of if we have federated decentralized organizations engaging with each other, you know, what is the, how much of it is self-managing and how much of it is led from the top, I think is easier answered well when we put it in a time scale. So if we're just starting and figuring it out and kind of having a playground and a practice learning space where we can learn safely, being, you know, maybe among the first to hold the ask this way and doing it that way, that's probably where leading from, you know, whoever is taking the leadership is more involved and necessary at that stage than when the organization is already up and running and doing its thing between the sovereigns and so on. And then in time, sorry about that, it's, it seems to be a, a thing that fighter jets fly when I speak. 
and um, they really don't fly all the time, but they do fly when I speak. And so then I was thinking in time and taking a step back and saying, well, why would folks want to be parts of this decentralized, federated organization of organizations, if you will, or this, this ecosystem, not organization, really, right? And, um, you know, what is it that, at least at the very beginning, is being provided? And I was listing a few things, and it's by no means exhaustive, because I realized how I went practical based on my background. And then Marianne made her contribution, that added a whole other dimension, right? But so for me, it's sort of, you know, what are we providing and why are we providing? So we're providing a health space and a goal and a vision that, that's really big that people may resonate with. And we're providing connection, connecting a lot of these independently arising organizations, not all of which are connected. And then the power that comes from that connection, you know, the goal vision, maybe funding access and the aggregation of resources and so on. And it's sort of this power in numbers and knowing stuff, knowledge comes faster, experience arises better in diverse places, those types of things, right? But, you know, why would organizations want to join like what are they getting i think that's part of what comes to me on one hand there's a question of what's the right structure but i think the structure has to it has to tie with why they'd want to be there you know many organizations will want funding many organizations will want others to sort of spar with and learn from many would want this open source multiplayer collaborations that pete described where i do this you do that and then somebody else does something else and sort of having that ecosystem and capacity. And then the other wise are just, you know, to have it, to help, to benefit others, also benefit self, accelerate progress, you know, to build more inclusive, diverse ecosystems themselves to see that it can work as a world model. But I think that if we do the structure really well, but we don't address the you know, why they should come and what is it we're providing or kind of putting the cart before the idea of the horse. And so for me, they kind of go together. Maybe it's all been answered and I'm just asking it for myself, but I'd be interested because as I'm trying to describe to my friends in various pods what Meta Project's about, when I get more practical and concrete, at least to some folks, it will be easier to describe. And at the same time, it is so important in, in, to, in my mind, this whole sovereigns working with each other on this basis that's different, the authoritarian, hierarchical, top-down organization, you know, figuring that out well and then modeling and bringing that in. And then as we maybe get good at it or better at it, if we're still learning and practicing, you know, maybe then other communities can do exactly the same thing in their places, whatever those places are. Not exactly the same thing, right? But but kind of like, it's not ours to lead at that point in the sense of now we do this and that's how we do it. Anyway, that's where my head went and there weren't a lot of hands up at that point. So I thought I'll stick mine up, but now I'm very interested in hearing other people. <laughs> yeah, thanks Kiva. Great comments, thank you. Uh, Pete. Yeah, thanks, Kilu. And I wanted to, um, uh, it's a really good question. It makes me kind of want to kind of want to say again, um, I, th I think there are like a number of levels uh, that we need to build together before it starts to make sense to more people. Um, and different different folks of us are called to work in different levels and maybe a couple levels at once or, or things like that. Um, so one of the things I kind of want to watch for is not stepping on each other's toes as uh, I get really passionate about the what I think of as the bottom layer. I think actually Jordan on the call yesterday was calling it the highest level of ab abstraction. I call it the lowest level of, of um, uh, architecture kind of um 
and it's like pete why are you doing that when i think we should be working here is a is kind of a valid question and i want to make sure that we can say to each other yes th that's important too and i thought about that a little bit or i want to talk to you about that or i want to listen to you about that and don't distract me too much from making the little part that i i'm super called to to uh to work on um not that you were doing that keyword but um, there's there's a number of levels of of kind of uh, where the architecture needs to be built, and we're kind of building them all together at the same time, and trying to figure out which one we're we're working on. It's really confusing. This is uh, I, I have a say, saying when we get into you know one of these calls where it seems like we've talked around each other for an hour and a half, and we wonder, you know, we feel like we know less than we knew before we got onto the call. It's like this is this is the work. Bootstrapping is hard. <laughs> Just relax. It's okay. Um, I wanted to come back to Marianne's thing real quick, uh, um, involving everybody and and everything. I I actually extend that also to you know anything that's sentient um, and and the world, right? Um, as do the rest of us, I'm sure. Um, and that's why. That's why that's why the only answer can be decentralization is kind of the way I think of it. So then uh, it's also why the the core architecture of the decentralization has to be really simple um, because you want not only do you want to be able to plug in the people that you know and the people that you can imagine, but the people that you can't even imagine and and ways in which you can't even imagine imagining. Uh, all of that has to work together, right? So kind of at the core, the decentralization is, <clears throat> can you organize a group of people? Can you make commitments? You know, can that group of people make commitments to other groups of people? Um, and can you talk about what you need and what you can do? And are you willing to be listed in, you know, in directories of that kind of thing? And much more than that is kind of outside the scope of that that bottom level of architecture is the way I think of it. There's things that are super important, right? Like, um, how do I pay my rent? Um, uh, you know, how can we do value exchange so that we allocate resources better? All of those kinds of things is a couple layers up for me from the 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 bottom level is, sovereigns make commitments to each other and can express themselves in in standardized ways um uh, so the the rules of the game at the bottom are you know can you talk about what you need and what you want in a fairly standardized way and you, can you make a kind of a standardized commitment um in the real world in the old world in the old world, uh, standardized commitments, there's a whole bunch of, of law around that. Uh, it's contract law and other kinds of law going back, you know, for 400, 600 years, something like that. Um, uh, and I think we're gonna be borrowing a lot of the kind of the ideas of how we make commitments to each other from contract law. But um, I think we'll also be recasting it a lot too. But when I when I talk about a commitment, um, one way to think of it is as a promise, a, a faithful promise to a friend is one way to think of it. Another way to think of it is it's kind of like a contract. I'm making a contract with a vendor. Um, both of those, thinking of a promise or a commitment like that, it can confuse people when you go, well, I thought we were talking about promises, Pete. Or, or, I thought we were talking about like commitments. The, the reason I bring up contract law is because contracts end up being written down. Um, and when many of us talk about these sovereigns working together, we start talking about, okay, so what are they communicating? How are they communicating? And then pretty quickly you realize that if you need to talk to one sovereign or 10 sovereigns or 100 sovereigns or 1,000 sovereigns, or if you need 1,000 sovereigns talking to other thousands of sovereigns, you really need standardization and you need clarity and transparency. So 
like contracts, those promises will end up getting written down and like, maybe not like contracts, I think a lot of them will actually be published um, transparently. Um, one of the things that we need more of is transparency with what, you know, what those sovereigns agree about um, and what kind of promises they're making to each other. Um, that's something that we're used to hiding in a centralized body, right? I don't know all the things that IBM thinks of internally or Monsanto. Um, they hide a bunch of that. A lot of that, just when we decentralize those interagreements between uh, bodies need to make, need to be transparent. And then promises is one kind of thing that needs to be transparent. Um, project status and project availability and you know needs um, those are kinds of things that are going to need to be standardized too so that when jordan says you know okay i'm looking at a rolled up dashboard of the meta project dashboard for 2023 i can see that these parts of the mosaic we're working on are going really well um, these other parts uh, we've got some gaps this part over here it's a mess <laughs> Um, I need I need some sovereigns just to help me work on that mess. Um, the sovereigns who are, are to, to make all of that dashboardy stuff work, there's going to be a network of the promises and then reports out um, and then to make the reports out so that we can syndicate them and publish them and distribute them and participate in them, they're going to be standardized. So I guess that's where I came back to. I think the the, the core thing is, a few simple rules and agreements to communicate um, with everybody else. And that's there's not much more. So then that will let anybody who wants to plug into that network, all they have to do is like, you know, yes, I can I can talk about what I want to do, um, what I need accomplished, and I can talk about how it's going uh, for me. Uh, and, and yes, um, since you've defined it, to find a kind of a simple file format for me to use, yes, I can I can make sure that that happens. So that's what we're looking for. Thank you. Pete. Uh, it it could well DAOs and blockchains are 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 taking the same parallel path to where we're going. Um, maybe neither one of them has the the complete answer. Yeah, just a yeah. We'll co we'll come around. Um... We'll come around and Marianne on this this call. I'll if we can carve out ten minutes or fifteen minutes. I'll I'll explain a hypothesis. But there's very specific things that DAOs can't do in their interface with the old world. So we'll probably need a lot of DAOs, but we also need some other kinds of structures. And then we need for all the appropriate structures to be able to work together in a decentralized autonomous federation. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that here in a little bit. Uh, Judy, and then Michael. Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, I'm feeling a bit of apples and oranges here in the sense that we're talking about values and values relate to how we behave and the promises we make and the responsibility we share with others. And it also relates to how we communicate those dimensions, which are very different culturally around the world and having, had some experience with that in my former life, um, the communication processes and even some of the organizational concepts change depending on the culture that's dominant that we would be dealing with. And it can be as specific in culture as the Italians are different than the Brits, or it can be as specific as the engineers are different than the social scientists. And so when we think about trying to reduce things to the simplest possible messages, that's going to be very important to cross those boundaries. Then it becomes less important what the cultural differences or the educational differences or the functional differences might be. If you can communicate what's important to me is X, that we finish it within 12 months and that we each work as we most work effectively is a universal message. But if you start to try to put the measures of one culture on the behaviors of another culture, it's very counterproductive and it creates 
a breakdown in the communication and resistance. And so I think this is worth really thinking hard about how to keep it as simple as possible to avoid the barriers that will emerge if we make it too fine detailed. Yeah, so there's a, uh, there's a cost trade-off to every level of specificity at every level of architecture. I think um, what you just said very much matches Pete's intuition that at the lowest or deepest level of architecture that the most other things depend on, um, you want that as simple as possible because as the more specific it gets, the more things you alienate. So you need like the most encompassing universal architecture that then people can self-organize into varying levels of structure by culture, domain, and th those can be different and then how those connect and communicate. So it feels like, I mean, it, it feels like an organic like growth and branching out of a tree with lots of different branches and twigs and leaves and things getting self-arranged. Uh, so thanks, Judy. I, I just think it's, it's awfully easy to disenfranchise participants if you try to suggest that the order that is natural to them is not a useful order to the organization as a whole. And so yeah. somehow the message of do this as it works best with your community, with your workforce, with your members, with your practices, that has to be a core value that's communicated and then visibly supported by acknowledging that there is effectiveness in the difference. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Judy. Michael, and then Wendy. Um, yeah, relatedly, particularly to the last um, stuff that uh, Judy was mentioning and, and also, um, Parking back to what Kilu was was asking, um, you know, I was I was struck by the question, uh, you know, what do they get for joining us? Which I, I may be getting a word wrong, but there was there was something about that, and um, I have have said things like this before, but I'm wondering if there are ways for us to move more quickly than we can in organizing our own sovereigns with the people we're already connected with by having at least you know, an effort from us to concentrate on people who are already out there doing things that we think are aligned with what we're trying to do and accepting the idea that we are part of a movement that the you know lowercase m meta project is something bigger than what we're doing. We're not trying to organize it. We're trying to organize with it. And you know there there are people engaged, um, and you know we can move very quickly toward a more diverse base by saying, oh, here's this organization, you know, 18,000 miles away from us that has no idea we exist and we are identifying with them and supporting them and, you know, listing them in our directories and, you know, inviting them to come hang out with us, but also going and finding out where their meetings are. I mean, it, it, it really relates to me a, to a lot, a lot to diversity efforts I've seen in companies where they often fail because they're trying to figure out how to invite people in versus moving out to engage with people where they are, respecting what they're doing, participating in it, supporting it, and forging connections that then naturally lead to you know, greater ease in, in recruiting or inclusion. Um, but you know, I, I think, uh, you know, asking people to join us and, and being able to have an offering that says what they're gonna get for joining us versus asking ourselves, what do we get by finding and seeing and listening to others 
um, endorsing those sovereigns over what we have in common that we're part of the same movement. Um, yeah. That that's just. The, the notion I want to put out there. Yeah, totally perfectly articulated, Michael. Yeah, it's, it's finding, seeing, serving, supporting. So, that, so the whole idea of this and the reason we're first contextualizing it in this universal and eternal meta project language is the idea that we're not initiating anything. We're responding to something that's arising of its own free will and hearts and minds around the world. My, Michael, you're a branding guy, uh, part, partly. So it makes me think of people who say, well, whether you actively acknowledge it or not, you are branding and marketing every day. The only decision is whether you do it consciously and well or poorly. I think that's, that's kind of the same notion with the meta project or another metaphor. We could say we are all here on one planet at one moment in history with one set of challenges and goals. And we either are, are participating in that consciously and well or unconsciously and poorly to our peril. And so it's trying to just recognize what's already there that belongs to nobody and go, okay, if we're gonna move in support of this, and, and then what you just said is exactly correct. It's like, okay, well, we can't do it alone. There's nothing we can do, no matter how big we is. So we need to go find, connect, serve, support, empower the brilliant heroic people efforts that are already out there around the world. And then what we usually find is that 20 years ago, someone had a vision and something was put on their heart and they've been building the next piece that we thought we were gonna have to build, but it's already out there because it's been, it's been put on someone's heart. That's like Kevin was sharing that, uh, that good story. It's like, okay, well, I was doing this thing and I thought I needed a marketplace and poof, someone had already built it. Like, great, we saved 10 years. You know, We thought we needed a wiki and poof, somebody's already built that whole architecture. So. Those are hopefully the experiences that we increasingly find. Okay, um, thanks, Michael. Oh. I just want to I just want to add that that you know just to put a low bar on it, you know maybe a thing that we can do in some uh, you know some pod of us is to just say we're going to identify twenty other sovereigns entities outside ourselves and and hopefully outside you know, white North America that are, um, that are gonna, that, that we think are part of what we're doing and we're just identifying them for our support and outreach. outreach. Exactly. Yeah, go identify 20 things moving in the same direction and see how we can help. Yeah. Yeah, love it. Thanks, Michael, appreciate it. Wendy and then Jonathan, um, and I'd, I'd recommend we, we wrap this session maybe in the, the next five minutes or so uh, to save our last 30 minutes for a couple more things. Wendy? Um, I'd just like to bring up the challenge of managing difference because when you have information, it's information only exists when there's difference. So you're always trying to negotiate when you're trying to learn anything. There's always It doesn't exist unless there's something you could have known that um, you don't know. End of story. So it, it ends a story if you don't acknowledge that, I guess. So when we welcome other people, um, we're going to have to get much better than I think we are even now about managing difference because um, when you're trying to communicate something, you're trying to negotiate out the difference so there's only one meaning. But what you leave out is often the stuff that you needed to leave in because <laughs> that's what you needed to learn about. So, and I know this is this is all part of cybernetics theory and other bits and pieces. And I read a very powerful article about how that connects connects to ecology. That difference is something that you can only manage with conversations, which seem to be very inefficient um, way, but necessary way of negotiating, keeping the difference in play, while and and just accepting the fact that that difference is not going to stop us, and then at the same time recording the differences in a way that we can actually use. So we negotiate between us. We would not be in this room unless we had this ishness of what it is that we're talking about. But you can't scale the ishness without things like values, as Judy has said. So to be clear, we I feel that we need two streams here. One is the, the very specific thing around communication and specific structure that helps us do difference better but communicate in a way that we are not pushing other people away. So communication is 
X, you know, reducing, reducing, re reducing. So in theory, you can only mean it one way. The conversation has to happen at the same time and built. And that's where the trust comes from. It's like, oh, we get each other. And you can't, if you try and separate them out and do efficiency, which is the communication, without the conversations happening in a way that they sort of cross boundaries, we're going to have a problem. So at the moment, what I'm noticing is that there's a lot more differences that are happening that we're managing through conversation, back channel conversations, other things that aren't turning up in our communication stream. They're happening. You know, back channel comments inside our meetings, emails between people, meetings that are happening outside of our general exchanges. They're keeping the wheels turning, but we're not seeing them. And those conversations are the structural bones of what we're trying to do that help us keep us in value with one another. So I think we've got a little way to go yet on how we manage difference, because that's what we have to use internationally. And it just starts to fall apart the minute you have people who are not in our room and whose conversations we're not hearing and what's happening. So. I don't know, I'm not trying to lecture. I'm just saying that this stuff comes from cybernetics and people like Bateson and people who've been around for a while and who've got strong ecological um, credentials. Um, and it's too big to share here, but I don't see us managing the difference properly. And there's two streams, the communication stream and the conversation one, and they're not matching up. Yeah, so so I hear what, what you're saying. Um... And I, I think there's a there's a deep truth or principle there. And Wendy, as I understand it, um, um, you're you're working on writing down some kind of concrete proposals on how we can manage that. And if I can be assistance um, of you in, in refining those and helping us get them to the group, um, yeah. I, I and, offer and I just that. So thank to, you. I just wanted to say I'm getting some help from other people in in our group today around that. Um, it just feels too slow. But it has, we have to be really important that what we create also doesn't push us apart because yeah. it's very sensitive stuff sometimes where people can feel insulted on the simplest things and you're thinking, oh, how on earth do we rescue success from, no, failure from success? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Great. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah, I appreciate that. And um, Jerry, just acknowledging your comment, then at the same time, if there's not back channels and everything happens in a group, that breaks down too. So there's a there's a wise way to do every level. So we keep the sovereignty, autonomy, small channels, small groups, open dialogue, fields of trust, but then we don't lose the messages that um, need to be, be stacked up. So yeah, thank you both, uh, Jerry and Wendy for bringing this perspective. Okay, Jonathan, and then, um, then we'll advance into a couple, couple other areas that I think might be important today. Regarding communication, differences, inclusion, outreach, onboarding. Um, there's a, to reduce that to a simple model, um, I think we need to include um, the notion of an expert because, you know, there's just no chance we're all gonna be experts. Uh, there's just too much material, but I think designated experts that can be resources at large are going to become important. Uh, I think of them as spokespeople or I, 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 yeah, I don't know if I've thought about it completely, but uh, automating this is just not going to work. I, it's, to, <laughs> I've been in yeah, software yeah. for 40 years and it's crap. Yeah, so. yeah, thanks. Yeah, Jonathan, and just to tie that back to another conversation you and I had in a, in a different group um, with some people, you were mentioning that you, you're sensing that the emergence of something like guilds may be an important next step. So you just brought up expert like as an individual. So we can have designated experts what also seems to be very apparent is the need for guilds of experts by yeah. area that are themselves autonomous and self-directed and have their own free will. And then, and then you just said the, the term spokesperson. So I think we would want wise, capable, competent, qualified people 
of certain functional skill sets to be collaborating together and elucidating their thoughts and projecting that out to the network. You'd want that coming from a variety of different guilds so that you're, you're not being driven by one thing or the other. We can see a tremendous amount of that type of um, that chaos happening in our political world right now, where you just follow one little thread and you're not looking at the totality of like, how do we forge functional society? So, okay, great. So, so that's on the, Wonderful. that's on the, on the docket. And I think, um, perfect. Okay. So we have uh, 28 minutes left um, before we switch to our retro and next steps. Um, I'd like to save 15 minutes just to um, at the end. So we have, um, let's just get quick updates from a few different groups. Um, Pete, uh, you led an effort for a few of us to work on kind of this abstract patterning around federal federation, decentralization, autonomy, et cetera. Um, do you feel like we express most of that? Is there any other updates you'd want to share from that breakout group? Um, no, I, I think we expressed it pretty well. I, it, it's, I, it's, uh, I feel like it's in a little bit of a state of confusion right now. Um, a lot of the call yesterday was at kind of multiple levels and we didn't really resolve any one level well. Correct. Um, so I hope within a few days I'll be able to digest down the, the stuff in that call down to a lower level and maybe kind of republish that and then work with those folks and other folks to talk about how that low level relates to other levels. Yeah. But it's, it's, I, I, we covered a lot of it and, and yeah. the, what, what to cover now. So what, what I'd like to, the group to appreciate of Pete. Um, so Pete has a project called um, Massive, let's say that has different things, but um, Pete's working on this abstract thing through massive human decentralization. So what Pete's attempting to do is really outside of specific application at the highest, at the lowest level, most fundamental level of abstraction to try to really define these principles, um, kind of keeping it pure. Then we're gonna try to act them out together, which will require some adjustments to meet reality. Um, but Pete's feeling called to really um, maintain that purest level. Um, so thank you, Pete, for that work and happy to continue to assist in advance if that's helpful to you. Okay, great. Um, Kilu, would you like to report out a couple minutes on, there was a group that thought some of the work on stories that we did was meaningful. Um, so we, we wanted to figure out how we tell stories on an ongoing basis. Would you like to just share a quick couple minutes on, on that sure. group and what's next? Yeah, thank you. And so we kind of came from the place and landed even more in the place of how valuable our stories and how valuable our stories when well analyzed, and we have experts within this group and you know, among us who can do that really well, who can capture, when stories are captured, then we can see more than what we think is emerging. And we can see what's invisible becoming invisible, becoming visible. And also putting it on the arc of time, you know, we're, we're at a particular phase right now. And so it's really valuable to capture the stories that we're telling right now and that we're expressing right now and to see what's arising from those, because we can still do something around those and about those versus we will get into a more settled phase where things are more frozen. And even if we capture what's happening from stories, we kind of can't go back and have as many degrees of freedom to do something about it, that choice that we can now. So this is one notion of the value of stories, capturing the stories and the practical questions of, I mean, we didn't talk about it as much, but it's really sort of the backdrop how do we tie the story world and capturing stories world and the value of stories world to the world of, you know, we're here in practice building something and how do we take our experiential learning and, you know, that. And then we also spoke about how valuable is just the, the whole point of experiential learning and having a big enough space where we can go wrong without being wrong or being made wrong because we're practicing something new here. And so we have a space where we go from our lowest levels to our highest levels, but we often be in our lowest levels because you know that's the world we live in and we're, we're conditioned from. And so to have ever more awareness on one hand that that's the space we're in, and on the other hand, how the stories that we tell, you know, what level they come from, 
what do we walk in with? Our capacity is limited. Some days were more high, some days were more low. And, you know, all of that is meaningful. And if we are brave and lean in and do what we can already do, it can be really useful. I think that would be the summary. If anyone else wants to spend, Jordan, you are there as well. If anyone would like to add something, we should sort of round it out. I'll do that. And one more thing, actually. And Jordan, this is from your invitation from last week's call, which was that we also do get to come up with a meta story and sort of the overarching story and the overarching philosophy and, you know, all of that. And there's a story aspect to many of those items that you highlight. Yeah, perfect. So, so yeah, I think this notion that there's, um, we all have individual projects and yet there's a overarching and uniting meta project that we're either participating in consciously and competently or not. In that same way, we kind of each bring in our own stories of what's happening in our, in our lives and the circles we're participating in in the world. But there's an overarching and uniting meta story that's what's actually happening that none of us have really a complete view of. And we're either consciously and competently participating in that or not. So I think our ability to actually forge this into a, the type of movement at scale we've discussed is gonna be dependent on individuals on a regular basis. Maybe this is monthly, maybe it's quarterly, being able to observe the stories that they're telling at different levels of analysis and be able to match those and align, stack those up and align them from what we're doing and why it matters as individuals into what we're doing and why it matters in the sovereigns or circles we're participating in and, and why what we're doing and why it matters in those relates to what we're all here to do at this moment in history and why that matters and what's at stake. So, so great. So, so we'll have a small team and if that team's willing, if anybody else has energy, I would love to kind of continue another couple meetings with that, with that group. Anybody else is interesting to really um, look at how we create a little bit of a system and a process for surfacing those stories. And Wendy, I think that'll, that'll also help tie in some of the observations you're making. So thank you, Keely, Kilu, Wendy, Judy, um, others participating on that thread. Okay, beautiful. Um, Michael, would you like to give uh, a quick update on, last week we, we did a quick waterfall to flesh, flesh out from people um, what their particular areas of passion and qualification that they would like to participate in are. Uh, Michael got a small group together to begin to kind of make sense and look at what those answers are. Um, they got those basically just articulated into a spreadsheet, and then we're scheduling another meeting to kind of start to hypothesize on how we might be able to configure those. Um, so, Michael, would you like to give a quick couple minute update on on that? You you did a great nutshell right there. Um, we um, we took. Um, took what was in the waterfall last time and, and uh, you know, broke it down by person and um, talked about directions that we might um, go with. I put the link to the spreadsheet in the chat. So um, I, could, I, I think it's probably easier to look at if you guys look at it as opposed to me sharing it on screen because it's a lot of small type in the grid. Um, but I think that link should work for everybody. I've made it. Um, open, tell me if it doesn't. Um, and uh, what you'll see on the on the the right there is the beginnings of trying there 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 were sort of two two urges. One was, oh, let's identify the overlap here among the things that people say they want to contribute and push them together into groups. Um, but, on the other hand, you know, a lot of things are hard to classify and how people would classify their own strengths and urges and desires to work with people on things are different. Um, so at our next meeting and, and here, if we have a moment, you know, talking about how we um, let, the, let people find each other and let people express um, their, their strengths and how they classify them is, uh, an open question. Um, yeah. Our, yeah, our our hope though is to is to facilitate um, you know people acting in in smaller pods and and finding um, the things we can do. And Jonathan also um, took the copy and uh, um, did some. Uh, well, I'll let 
him describe what he did that he wanted to share. Uh, John, Jonathan, you want to just take maybe two minutes here to pull up your, do a screen share on your mind map? Yeah, sure. Let's see if I'm all set up here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so uh, basically I took the chat and pulled it into my program seriously and then did some hardcore editing. And these are all the people that I identified from the chat. And um, at the last uh, exercise you had, Jordan, where we described what we want to do or what we want to offer. Uh, and then I turn that into a document where each person's contribution is separated out. Um, and then what I did, so that this looks a lot like um, what I think Michael has. And then I went a little further and tried to identify um, categories. Um, so, um, these are my categories. Uh, they aren't intended to be uh, imposed. They're just my suggestions. They're my way of understanding everybody. Um, and uh, Michael wanted me to contribute these to his spreadsheet, but I didn't get a chance. So this is as far as I got. Jonathan, that's that's wonderful. It's uh, really helpful, I think, to see these things in mind map. So, yeah, let let's. Um, so, Michael, you have the lead, I think, on scheduling the next conversation for the group of people who's interested to take the spreadsheet and Jonathan's start, and then to start to come up with a hypothesis on how to group. And basically, where where we'd like to go is to see everybody, um, each individual, plugged into at least one little sovereign pod you know, area of contribution with a couple other people. Um, and I think that starts to weave the network of relationships and, and everything that we're looking for. Yeah. So and there, there's beautiful. a scheduling link in the um, Lionsburg um, uh, town square chat. Actually, maybe I can put it in the chat as well if, if there are people. Yeah, uh, yeah why, don't, why don't you drop that in the chat, Michael, and um, anybody who'd like to be a part of that. Um, but that's gonna be obviously the, that's the key thing is if we, we, we need to organize ourselves into small little groups and then, then we need to figure out how to get those groups making and keeping commitment. So, okay, Wendy, you have the last word before we, uh, before we switch to our, mm -hmm. our last little I, segment here. Um, I just noticed that the word dreaming turned up a little bit and in that process last week when we were talking about stories at different levels like the onion, you know, us and then, then wide out and then wide out, wide out. Um, and Pete shared his screen very, um, I guess carefully, there was things that we held at those inner levels that aren't necessarily reflected or reduced too much in those outer words. And somehow we need to not lose that richness because that was really important. And thank you, Pete, for that share. The words don't, aren't important to me, but they are important to you. So they're turning up and, and can easily get lost. Um, so somehow that unconscious and more deep work needs to still be in our work, even though when we reduce things to categories, we keep on losing that richness, which means yeah. we might keep on losing each other and our work yeah. together and yeah. um, create friction and in the difference instead of celebrate it. So I think that was really pinging me to Wendy as we were talking about those categorizations is that um, I know each person on this call to be an absolutely inexhaustible, non-categorizable um, conscious agent that is is vastly more complex than we could possibly try to describe. Um, so I think that's where there's something like, if we have to move together, we need to be able to coordinate in these groups, but there's maybe something like a community that's a predecessor to that, because if we don't start with individual sovereignty and community and truly appreciating and understanding each other, mm -hmm. um, we're not gonna get anywhere, so. Okay, Lisa, um, quick, quick last word. Yeah, I just been in listening, active listening mode here, just listening Thank to you. everybody. 
Uh, and yeah, I really like the mind map uh, that Jonathan did. Uh, I really think it's time to make it really easy to facilitate these connecting the dots, the different circles, as I Pilu talked about storytelling, right? Storytelling is about getting to know each other's stories so that we understand each other's perspectives because we are all fractals of one another. And creation is about bringing the fractals together, right? So we all have fractals, we all have different aspects. So it's really through conversation we uncover what these fractals are. Um, so I, you know, I, I, this is something that I've been trying to solve for a, a while. And um, so that really cut, that was the inspiration behind why I launched the Peace Cafe app. The Peace Cafe app um, is an open space where anyone can create circles and space. Scheduling is integrated in there, there's forums. I created circles for change makers, super connectors. So yeah, you know, welcome if you want to use it as a test ground even to pilot the pilot, so to speak. But it's really connection is about having spaces, right? Where you can hold space like this, but being able to also branch off, right? Have smaller circles. So I would say, um, yeah, um, I welcome you to um, to use it. And I would say, you would say, make it your own because I think it's about co-creation means like I will constantly evolve what I do and constantly learning and iterating. So I've just seen a lot of tools that we've been using, but as an optimizer, I just want to optimize how I use my time. So I use That's great, time. yeah. We'll make it optimize, Lisa, you know what I mean, you know? So I invite everybody to, you know, create, I can create a space for us if you want. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Lisa, if, if you would want to, um, you know, just do like a little five minute screen record demo or whatever and drop it into the, the yeah, chat system on sure. Mattermost, then everybody could take a look at it. And, and yeah, visuals, to... visuals are good. Yeah, I can, yeah, I yeah. can share my yeah. screen so you can actually visualize it. Um, so yeah, um, give me one second. Let me just share well, let's, I had, I had one more thing I, I have to get through today, I think, um, to stay on track. But if you wanted to just do that digitally and then drop it into the, are you on Mattermost? If you want to drop it into Mattermost, then everybody could so, look at it asynchronously. So that's, that's, that's what I mean about I feel like there's so many tools. I opened them on day one, but I have to be honest, I have no idea where. I'll okay, got it. Well, <laughs> so so uh, Lisa, to make it to make it easy, if you want to do just like a quick screen capture video share and send it to me, then I can distribute it. Um, I can get it onto Mattermost for you, so everybody can take a look at uh, what you've made and we can see. I'll just do a screenshot yeah. and email it to you. How's that? That way you can see it. Like, oh, I, I can drop the link as well. Anyone? Yeah. Can okay. Perfect. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. So I want to just take the, the last 10 minutes here. Um, so we're getting to where, um, so we can talk, I think it's really important, like I agree with Pete at the most critical level that it's really important that we relate to the idea of a meta project as something that's abstract and eternal and universal that, that we can conceptualize how it should be done. And then there's also, we need to I think equally learn by putting our feet on the ground where the rubber meets the road. And we talk about actually starting to make and keep commitments like outreach, connect people, empower them, be able to take in resources, channel resources, write checks, you know, interface with various, various things. Um, you actually start to need structure. So I, I think it's perfect that we're time box for, for 10 minutes here. Um, Bill and I might do a little interview, um, uh, recorded interviews so people could dive deeper asynchronously. But I wanted to kind of share um, how we got here. So, um, and the structure that we've created that includes um, a hybrid legal infrastructure, including a publicly accountable 501c3 at the core that if we wanted to, we could use to begin bringing in resources and then allocating those to the decentralized autonomous projects that we want to move in support of. Um, Marianne, I'm just seeing you on the screen, but obviously just like you guys are doing, the potential opens up then for lots of different sovereigns to be again, stacking their efforts into coordinated project proposals that we can go out and get grants for, et cetera. Um, and so, so from our background, my background in large scale infrastructure, there's a, there's a simple thing that is when you want to do something that's too big for any group to do in isolation, you usually need to set up kind of a clean white structure in a new place where everybody can work on what they all have in common. And so um, several years ago, we, um, we went through and, and I started looking around the country for attorneys, advisors, et cetera, that could help articulate, okay, if we needed to create a 
structure for something like a meta project that could serve as a commons, as a place of, um, of decision making, coordinating, being able to interface with the old world structures, staying legal and compliant so that we, we can we can work appropriately with the old world, being able to interface with for-profit capital flows, non-profit capital flows, public-private joint ventures, grants from the government like Planetary Care and others are working with, you know, operating then fractally at scale. And if we were to try to get people together around the globe to act that out, what would it look like? How would you conceptualize that, that whole thing? And so I want to, um, I'll just spend, five minutes here talking over um, what we designed and built. And I'd like to um, basically propose it as it, it took us a few years to figure it out and build it. And it might look complex and overwhelming at first. Um, we only have five minutes here um, because of the rich dialogue we had, but I think that's probably the perfect amount of time. Bill and I will do a deeper dive, like we said, but I'd like to propose it in the sense as a hypothesis to falsify. So I'd like to invite you know, I'll try to present what we did. If anybody sees cracks or holes or why it's not the right thing to do, or somebody has built something better and implemented it that, that would be better to move with, then let's dialogue with that. If nobody has, has, then I'd propose that we go ahead and use this as a starting point because it'll cut probably 18 months off of kind of a design build process. So I'm going to briefly share my screen and um, kind of show how this has been conceptualize. So, so we set out and said, okay, what if there was something like a meta project that we were all part of um, that we were recognizing and responding to? Um, to orient you to this picture, basically at the lowest level, you have something like the curvature of the earth. Um, at, that, at that very bottom level, you see some shared core values there like truth, love, justice, stewardship, wisdom. You can call those whatever, but they're the timeless and universal core values generally held by people of goodwill. Then there's the idea that, that we're all responding to some impulse. And that's, uh, Michael, I think you articulated that incredibly elo eloquently. That doesn't belong to anybody. Nobody owns that. It's like the central animating spirit moving in the hearts of people around the world who have been working for lifetimes to articulate you know, unique, special, important things, yet those things are separated. So as we started to look at how to deal with that, you see multiple problems. You see that um, we can start companies to address problems, but then we immediately end up with, with issues of, um, if we're gonna create really valuable things, concentration of wealth and equity, different things that need to be addressed over time, multi-generational multi stewardship issues. We can look at the government to do things, but I think we can all see very clearly that it's gonna be, need to be led by the good people of the small towns around the world. We talked about decentral and decentralization and federation. So we knew we'd need a structure outside of the existing governments or political parties. Then you look at nonprofits and you can look at and see that while there's a lot of incredibly wonderful heroic action happening, it's too often that's separated, it's dividing, we're competing for the same resources, we're moving inefficiently in parallel, et cetera. So we looked around the world for um, different structures that could meet a acceptance criteria. And those were things like having shared purpose and values it was things like having um, nobody own it, but having it exist on the basis of multi-generational stewardship. There were things like the ability to build both nonprofit and for-profit enterprises and to build in incentives and to be able to help secure each other's long-term financial security and, um, and to work in not just siloed for-profit or nonprofit areas. It related to long-term long -term multi-generational governance because what we need to create together needs to last for seven or 52 generations and not just for the next few years. So after, after looking around the world at different structures that nobody owns and studying decentralized autonomous organizations, trusts, um, cooperatives, nonprofits, et cetera, 
we realized that we would need a, at the base, something like a community that could then instantiate itself into lots of different places around the world and live out these structures. What we did um, as a prototype, and this has already been designed and built, so if we want to use it, it's available. But at the lowest level in North America, we realized that the, this was in conjunction with the Sterling Group who helped set up the Gates Foundation and a lot of other um, creative charitable work. We realized that the most flexible governance vehicle in the United States that nobody owned was a Delaware-based 501c3 nonprofit organization, but not used in the traditional way that it's used, used as essentially a legal commons or a multi-generational stewardship vehicle that we could define through contract, like Pete was talking about, through operating agreements and through legal agreements, how that would be governed in a multi-generational way. We then realized that we needed the combination of for-profit and non-profit things in a sample ecosystem. And so we set up a Delaware-based C corporation, which things like Berkshire Hathaway are, which can be a large complex, um, complex conglomerate. And essentially how the system can function is that we can build for-profit and non-profit things. The holding company can essentially function as a multi-generational endowment for the mission, the vision, the community. The holding company can also act just like Berkshire Hathaway would and set up companies. Each company can set up its own incentive plans. Each company can pay people commercially, you know, um, appropriate rates, et cetera. But while building shared equity over time in an ecosystem. Going a step further, um, we realized back on this decentralization theme, that there was lots of other related things in countries around the world and even in the US and Canada, North America, that wouldn't be appropriately stewarded by the nonprofit. So down here at the lowest level, you can see there's things like, you know, cooperatives and credit unions that are kind of similar heart and values. There's trusts and foundations that we want to be working and cooperating with. There's, there's other areas when you get into how to influence um, policy and how to realign incentives and legislation that you need things like 501c4 social welfare organizations for independently organized super PACs. But all this basically follows that same logic of decentralization and federation of small groups of people taking responsibility for these different areas. Bill describes this core system kind of like a power takeoff on a tractor where you can where you can attach lots of different things to it. So for instance, with this nonprofit whose mission is to design and build a better world, any one of the, the projects that we're involved in could be set up as fiscal sponsorships where each of those projects could go out and if it can define how its mission advances the mission of the nonprofit to design and build a better world, it can go out and gather its own resources, set up its own governance, its own, its own decision-making, act fully autonomously while flying under the umbrella of the nonprofit. So the nonprofit kind of acts like almost an aircraft carrier to launch lots of these special purpose vehicles. Then over time, any of those special purpose vehicles could grow into the level of structure that's required. Additionally, that nonprofit can also work with a myriad of partner organizations, like Michael was saying, there's already millions of nonprofits around the world who are doing really valuable things. And as we begin to aggregate resources, we want to find and connect up and power those. And so essentially, my simple proposal, we've already set up some more layers of this, and I won't get in today. But, but the simple proposal is, um, Bill and I will, will do a little deeper presentation. But if, if no one's built a more comprehensive system. We've already, we've also paired this with a um, process rooted in integrated program delivery so that we can start, you have the structure element. You also have the software of like how organizations can move together, how they can signal like Pete was talking about what they're doing, why it matters, what the needs gaps are offers. So we've kind of set up this multi-dimensional thing. And so, so again, if anybody's built something that they, that they think is more appropriate. Um, I'd love to get into deep dialogue and try to put crowbars under this. 
um, there's been a reasonable amount of work that's gone into this. And so if, if nobody has a more compelling starting point, this 501c3's nonprofit is available for us basically to immediately begin to receive and allocate resources and community. And those can be either uh, driven externally to partner organizations, or those can be driven internally to the sovereigns or pods that are beginning to articulate their project plans and make and keep commitments. So I know that might be a lot. I was going to save a little more of the meaning uh, for, for it today, but that's basically kind of um, what I'm putting out as a, as a hypothesis. Um, and I'd love that to be disproved. Um, and then I also, if, if there's not really compelling reasons, um, we've, we've done our best to work with dozens of advisors to try to articulate it. Um, and so I'd kind of like to get moving rather than spend like a year in another design build process. And the, the great thing about a structure like this is it protects the sovereignty and autonomy of every individual pod that spins up. They, if they want, they don't need to have any connection. If they want to be fiscally sponsored and get to receive resources, they can be. But it, it's also the um, opportunity for each of those, if it's ever not serving them well, to evolve into any other kind of structure that's required. So it's like, that's kind of the ultimate proof is anybody can leave at any time once, once we federate. Um, so, so that's kind of a, a hypothesis. Okay, we've got a couple hands and we're three minutes over. So um, I think how we can manage this is um, for anybody that, that needs to jump off the call, I love you, I appreciate you. Look forward to seeing you this week and next week. Um, for anybody that wants to stay, we're now into 30 minutes of retro on the meeting and planning for next steps this week. So please, anybody that like to continue the dialogue remain, and maybe we'll um, take the first five minutes of that just to wrap up with uh, the hands that are up from Bill and Kevin. So Bill, over to you. Okay. Richie, thank you for being here. Um, uh, See ya. Uh, all right, thank you. As you can all imagine, um, this is, it's taken a lot of work, a lot of thought, and um, there's a lot that's gone into it. So I'm not gonna say much except this. The, since there are so many reasons for every single thing on here, there are, we literally wrote a book, a 57 page book two years ago on why this could be. So. My suggestion is um, that we could use a waterfall or a dialogue or email circulating to, to uh, just kind of give a chance for everybody to pour their questions into a common place. And then Jordan and I could answer them in a um, asynchronous manner that, and then everybody gets to see that, that might be helpful. And, for any other dialogue, just know that I'm available to talk about the complexities of this and the, my, my side of it, as Jordan is, that's all. Okay, Bill, I love that idea. That was one of the key takeaways we wanted from the meeting today. So, so let's do that. Um, let's take um, a couple minutes before we, Kevin, let's go to you and then we'll take a couple minutes on that, that waterfall suggestion. Um, yeah. I've got to go, but I, you know, I, I first invested in a for-profit subsidiary of a majority nonprofit about 20 years ago, and the model works, and it's, it's not new, but it's good. Okay, beautiful. Kevin, I'd love to have a conversation, um, maybe in our next call. Let's talk about what worked, what didn't work, and, and how we do what mm -hmm. worked and don't do what didn't work. <laughs> yeah, nothing about that project didn't work. Uh, okay. that, that was a good one. Okay, fantastic. Beautiful. Well, thank you, sir. You know, okay, it, it worked when you have appreciating assets as the base. I mean, we did it with a bed and breakfast up in this area, training you know young men and women to get jobs in uh, you know joie de vivre hotels and restaurants and things. But it, yeah, it worked. <clears throat> yeah, just, just yeah, I think that that is a huge key of this appreciating assets as a base. So so for a for a long term thing. Uh, yep. 
that that's really critical. I'll be glad to say more. I just got, I'm going to the movie with kids and grandkids. So I gotta go. Well, and that's right. beautiful. Right. Kevin, bye thanks bye. for being here today. Okay. Talk soon. Okay. So let, let's take a minute um, before let's take uh, two minutes and do a waterfall of questions that um, the group would like uh, us to work to answer asynchronously this week in a more detailed presentation. So we'll go till uh, 209 here, two minutes. Bill, I think we can hear you typing. Oh, we need him. All right, ready? Waterfall. Ready, Mark. Get set. Go. Okay, beautiful. Um, so thank you, everybody. I will stop the screen share on this. Um, and we will answer those questions and more um, in a little presentation. Uh, Michael, I saw your note on the PDF. Um, I'll, I don't have that available to post in the chat right now, but we'll clean up the PDF and, and post that this week to Mattermost or wherever so people can, can um, view at length. Okay, beautiful. So shall we move into uh, retro maybe for 10 minutes and until uh, 1020 or so, 220, and then uh, 10 minutes just for kind of structuring this week a little? Um, I offered to take the chat and incorporate it into the mind map I showed you. Yeah, beautiful. All right. Beautiful. So um, how did the meeting go today? How did it, uh, Pete, what was the question you asked? How, how did it, how did it feel? How did it impact you? Yeah. What could we do better? I would say, what could we do differently instead of what could we do better? But... Thank you, non-judgmental. What could we do differently?
Jonathan? Um, since our current culture comes from just massive illusion of scarcity, and I think I, I certainly perceive the funds that are spoken of now as being something we're going to fight over. You know, there's never going to be enough of it. Um, I think some attention needs to be put on the uh, idea of abundance and that all of us will get our needs met uh, as long as they're those needs are genuinely needs. Those are my uh, thoughts. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. Keelan? Love what Jonathan just said about the abundance. And I, I, I think it was a good meeting. It was, for me, I liked that it was grappling with things that were both practical as well as looking into the future and you know there are, it's like an experiment you you get the money to do an experiment and then you get the answer if you can analyze up to a point and then from then on you have to do the experiment you can't know the answer until you do it and so i think on one hand we're talking about how to do the experiment the best we can and and you know for context it hasn't been going on for that long and we've actually done more than we think we have and we've covered more than we think we have. And on the other hand, the practical questions are that we get then other kinds of, you know, answers and considerations, things that need to get up, come up. So I like that practical aspect. I, um, I'm a little concerned is too strong a word, but I would like to see more, and I don't know what more looks like, but I'd like to see more attention paid on how do we be well with each other and with what arises and with how we are being pushed and this is a this is really landing loud i don't even like it right but it's landing so loudly that i kind of think it's really important and it's not landing just here it's landing everywhere and i think it's important because we're right now this bunch of amazing people so we can hold more than usual in a greater space than common, doing things that are more extraordinary than normal. But that's not a, that's not a given, nor is that a continuing state necessarily. It may this all may continue, but if it expands and goes to encompass more of the world and more of diversity, very soon we're going to be tested on how well can we hold stuff. And so I think that. That's just what is in the back of my mind. And I don't know how to answer that practically. I think we're doing actually a really good job with these multiple different conversations, however they arise, as well as feeling heard and you know, taking into account what people say and seeing things repeating, probably because they're important and all of that. But I think that's an important theme. But I don't know I don't know the how. I don't know the practical of that other than speak about it and yeah. you know, know know it. Thanks, Kilo. Stacy. Yeah, thank you, Kilo. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say I really like the meeting, but maybe and maybe if in the beginning there would have been time to um, say, you know, has anybody encountered any difficulties or noticed any difficulties this this week that they want to bring up? Not to get into a deep discussion of it, but just to identify it and maybe then direct it to another time for a fuller conversation. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's so, so key. Thank you, Stacy. I appreciate that. Um, running issue logs in organizations is really critical so that anything that someone notices as an issue has a place to go. And then, and then there's probably a group that needs to be analyzing and devoting time to those. So I'm gonna also put in there here the chat the issue of a an, the issue of an issue log <laughs> issue number one we need an issue log um, second is um, you know people willing to devote time to solving issues 
So thank you, Stacy. Very valuable. Wendy. Um, two things, um, but plus one for the noticing difficulties and um, issues. And I think that um, there's a, a pattern around all these multiple streams of communication that I find we're not necessarily keeping up with. And I'm getting the sense that we're now starting to get a bit disordered and keeping up in all of those and our own worlds, which is creating, I guess, a noise of um, lack of coherence because we're not coming, we're not turning up prepared because we've got to catch up in, in so many places. and. I guess the hope is there's a technical solution to that. But the most important thing I, I want to bring is that there is a lot known in um, writing and books and theory that we're not bringing to the table here. So the stuff that I was talking around difference is not me. <laughs> but it does, there's a huge amount that's known about these things. And there's something about the role of looking at what we're talking about and then taking what about what is known about that from other places you know frameworks or definitions or and we're just using luck dumb luck i guess <laughs> great luck but yeah to bring that in because there's some there's a lot of evidence in some places that we should just not do certain things um and we should do certain other things um and yeah that's i don't see that a place for that or the deep thinking around one or two things apart from dawn of everything conversation i think that's one good place for that. So little difficult difficulties and then big knowledge bodies and we're not meeting the two. Yeah. So we, yeah, we, need to to process, we need to yeah, process to, um, to bring that in. I agree. One, one thing I can promise for certain based on my experience trying to build and run organizations is that at any point, anybody will be able to take a extremely obvious book of the things that we obviously should be doing and walk into the organization and we will not be doing them like can promise ourselves that and mm -hmm. so we can so i think that's a that's a really critical topic that you're bringing up wendy is is how we have the humility to meet where we are with all the things we should obviously be doing but in a way that lets us emerge without violating core principles so um mm -hmm. I, uh, just one quick thought is i've been been thinking it'd be fun to crowdsource like out of all the things that we've all read that we should obviously be doing, if we could state those in, in terms of some kind of principles, I guess. And then as we, as we navigate, we could be watching those and just going, okay, we can't apply all these frameworks simultaneously, but are we at least doing what we're doing without violating any of the core principles or wisdom? Like, is there anywhere we're getting off track? Um, so we, we can think about that. I'm gonna put that down there. Um, how to crowdsource the core principles we don't want to violate slash want to adhere to. Great, Pete. I wanted to appreciate uh, Stacy's suggestion of uh, a reflection time at the beginning of, of the calls about difficulties that got met during the week. Um, and not to diminish uh, or other sides uh, that suggestion, but to complement it, uh, I, I think maybe we should also, during the week, try to be mindful of things that we appreciate as we do them together um, yeah. and log those to bring those up and log them. Yeah. Okay, so there's, um... So Pete, what I hear you saying is there we should have an equal emphasis on celebrating and noticing what we appreciate and the value that's arising along with anything that are difficulties. And yes, except I, I wouldn't say equal, I would say balanced. Balanced, yeah. Balanced, thank you. Okay, great. Any suggestions? So, we, so we made a little format change uh, today. We had a ten minutes of um, of coffee. We had five minutes of meditation. We started and ended a meeting on time, other than me talking for two minutes longer, and then we went into a little bit of a retro. Uh, what worked or not about that? You... Um, I I like the format, and it felt backwards. It 
at first it was like, why don't we meditate during the coffee part and start, you know, working during the first five minutes. But then I realized you get people that come in a few minutes late. And if you've started working, then it's out of order. So I, I came to appreciate that we were in meditation for the first five minutes. Um, we, I think we noticed something that people coming in two minutes late uh, came into a bunch of blank, uh, blank things. So we, you and I changed our, our uh, names to, you know, we're meditating now until 35. Um, so just to reflect on, I, I think that worked well, actually, I, it, I, I liked it. And um, uh, posts and chat, I don't think people will see when they pop in. So we have to kind of set an expectation that, hey, if you come in and everybody's video is off, don't don't worry. Um, and then maybe changing the name is kind of the only only message I know that we can leave to people coming in. Yeah, Pete, that was uh, that was brilliant. Uh, quick thought on that. Okay, yeah, that, that was my thought is I think, um, so I'm glad that that worked okay. And I think there's there's a lot of people who need space between back-to-back -back Zoom calls. And so I think kind of that 1235 start. And then also maybe one of the most important things we can do to start the work is be present, you know, center. Okay, great. So, so let's spend a few minutes. I want to respect everybody's time. Oh, I see a, hand, a physical hand from Stacy. Yeah, just real quick. Don't mean to be picky at all. Um, it would be really nice to have music because I, I would feel more unified. Um, I had sent something, but I sent it, I guess, too late. You didn't get a chance to uh, see it. But there's just something about listening to the same thing that I think, especially in cyberspace, would help us connect. Yeah, I apologize. I, I missed your note. Um, I did not see that. Jason, this is the first time I've ever seen your face, brother. Welcome. Nice to see you. Thanks for... Uh, nice to see you, too. Yeah, thanks for being on the call and, and hanging out with us after for the retro. Beautiful. Um, Jason is a new friend that's joining us. So. Okay, great. So, Stacy, um, are you suggesting music maybe in that first that first 15 minutes? Is that where you're specifically looking at that or the first five minutes? Whenever you decide to do the meditation part, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, perfect. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, okay, uh, Gil asked briefly, can we invite new people to these calls? Yeah, Gil, I think um, just my hypothesis on that is that we should let anybody in who has a personal referral uh, right now. So we, we kind of hold the group integrity. Um, so maybe we don't, but uh, Gil, if there's specific people you would like uh, to, to bring in, that would be wonderful. This is a good time to start adding some people as we get structured here. Okay, great. So let's do some quick planning for this week. Um, so um, it feels like the approximate priorities that we came out of last week with um, kind of remain. Um, so, so in this little cycle, we're talking about how we structure, how we federate, how we align goals and projects and how we resource those. Um, and so it feels like those are still approximately right. So like Pete, I'm wondering if um, we want to have one more, try to like dive right into the next deep work. Um, if, I, I, if you and I want to get the wiki or whatever set up in advance, um, we could we could do that and then dive right into another working session on the um, decentralization. Yeah, I think that sounds great. Okay, so we'll, so we'll advance that. Um, I think Kilu just dropped off, um, but Wendy, I think uh, with with no Kilu raised her hand. Oh She's Kilu, like... oh oh you you shot up you shot up uh, diagonal from where you were. Uh, okay Kilu. Sorry, I don't know if you if you wanted to finish something. It just something popped in my head as we were speaking, so I don't know. If no no better. go go you're up. Okay, so uh, I really like your invitation. I forget one call ago, two calls ago, about setting up small successes so that we know ourselves as people who succeed with what we do and also just practice and learn. And I'd like to make sure that that continues if that's still aligned. Yeah. And it, it, it brings something practical. It brings experience. It doesn't have to you know, fix the world yesterday. 
and it's something that we both learn from as well as it will change how we see ourselves as well as taking stock of you know where we started and where we are and what's happening okay great um do you have in your mind a way that we could activate or act upon that suggestion i would invite so I think there are a couple of things that are moving in that direction. One is the groups of people doing something according to their passion. And another one, if there was a way to, if there was a way to invite people to, you know, strongly themselves choose whatever is something that is meaningful and successful with whatever commitment of time they have available. Like I'm, I love being here, but you know, markets are crashing and I work in finance. And lots of deals are getting done, so my time is really limited. Otherwise, like outside yeah. of little pockets, yeah. but I can still come up with something that I can commit to, and then get it done, and learn something from. And I respect so can everyone else. But yeah. if I invite yeah. it, I don't think it's it's a thing. If you invite it, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So I think. Um, so agree, I heard you and agreed. Yeah, and I, and it's really going to be critical what what you just said. Okay, um, Kilu, do you think it's worth um, advancing the discussion we had on stories and how we systematize that a little bit so that as we go through these rhythms, we're making the time to surface and tell stories? Yes, but I think I'm fairly useless in that compared to folks who can actually catch things from the story. So I think we should capture whoever else is interested in the story so, world from that. Okay. But yes. Yeah. So, so let's have, um, so Wendy, if you're up for it, um, uh, Wendy and Kilu and Judy was in that too. If anybody else would, would join, I think we should advance that um, with another working session this week, if you guys are up for it. Um, uh, Wendy, I think I think last last week, Kilu scheduled that. Wendy, I don't, are you comfortable sending out a, a when to meet? Um, I, yeah, I'm happy. I'll, um, I probably haven't set them up properly yet and so I probably need a bit of tech help with that and I'm also happy with the time frames that other people set and my Saturday to your Friday is actually quite a good time but um, I know with Kalu and um, others and Judy quite often coordinating that ends up me lining up with their time versus vice versa, vice versa. so Kalu um, in the short term, do you want to drive it if you're, because I feel it's important. Because Stacy also has a contrib I, contribution to make here too. Yeah, um, I would like to ask for help. This is the week where my son is graduating high school. And so I, I really am not taking anything on, even as simple as scheduling something. Because I'm so behind on so many things. And next week I'll have a big conference, but I can probably step aside, but I don't want to organize. Perfect. After that, I can definitely step in in a, in a bigger way. Stacy, I can definitely send out a when to me. Just Thank give you me so much. like for for next starting with next week. Like when just give let's me start, a few let's start with um, Stacy. Let's start with Friday. Wendy mentioned that that her Saturday or Friday might work. So let's start with this Friday and into next week. Um, okay. at, and, and then I will I'll be away the following weekend. So this weekend works well for me and um, the following one does not, which puts us a fortnight out. I don't really think at the moment, I'm, I'm feeling that this is actually urgent to have going in some sort of format. And um, who else yeah. besides Kilo, Wendy, Judy? Jonathan's put his hand up. Jonathan. And, and Michael, Michael. Um, I've consulted, well, I need help and with George. that from a, a wording point of view, because our differences come from those, even in the setup not, of the ask. Well. And marketing okay. and engagement is important. And uh, 4 p.m. Eastern or after, Stacey? Got it. And the name so, of this call, <laughs> the name of it, it's a story, story sovereign at the moment. I haven't got anything okay. more. Yeah, let's call it story. So, so and Stacy, um, so four Eastern. So, so let's, so 12, sorry, one Pacific Friday afternoon. Um, I, I think I'm available at that time. So, so maybe we can kind of tentatively shoot, shoot for something this Friday afternoon. Okay, great. Um, so we've got advancement on the stories. We've got advancement on the patterns. Um, Michael, um, 
you've got scheduling out for another meeting to come up with a hypothesis on a pattern for pods and an organization we could present. Um, if you would be willing, just, just even between you and I, um, could we commit to have some kind of a hypothesis by next Wednesday that we could share with the group on something that might work? Um, even if it's just a starting point, I think that would be great. So, so let me know if you get stuck or, or need support. Um, okay, anything else? Um, so, so we'll keep advancing kind of those three core areas. Uh, Bill, you and I are gonna take the waterfall of um, questions on structure and we'll do a, 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 a interview or an asynchronous presentation on structure that people can digest on their own time. Um, so I think if we advance those four areas, those are probably the, the four highest, highest priority things. Does anybody else have any other critical areas that we should act on this week? Okay, I think we're good. Uh, Jason, just wanting to invite, uh, do you have any uh, comments or anything you'd like to insert before we break here? Thanks for joining uh, us today. I only saw the last uh, 30 minutes. So um, I know that these calls don't match up, but I, I had heard you might be doing a different call at a different time. Is that true? Yeah, we're going to, um, there's this, some people that want to join, but can't make the current time on Wednesday. So um, I'll include you. Would you like to be involved in the scheduling of a different time? I'll include you on that list and we'll see if we can find something that works for a different group of people. Sure. Be great. Okay, great. Beautiful. All right. Well, good. We're, we're three minutes over, but I want to try to uh, get a little more disciplined, respect everybody's time. So I think we made good progress today. Um, we made good progress last week. We advanced the meetings. Good check-in today. We'll make some more progress this week. And then, um, you know, hopefully as we get into the next week or two, we're starting to prototype, um, get some structure, get some coordination on the pods and groups. And then we'll start putting in little amounts of resources, making little commitments, coordinating those and um, see if we can accidentally change the world. So it'll be fun. All right, dear friends, appreciate it. Thanks for your time today. Look forward to uh, seeing you all in our upcoming calls. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, you all appreciate it. Bye, Kilu. Thanks, Michael. Well, there's still three of us here. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here today. I'm trying Shoot. to leave, actually. But... <laughs> you can't. Kilu is uh, with EMM, too. So, this is uh, not my, my best uh, day or my best moment. <laughs> I think good... I'll leave when you hang up. All have, right, guys. have a good, hectic week. I or can't two. find it. <laughs> Thank okay, you. I'll, I'll close yes, you out. It, All right, it's thanks. pretty crazy. Bye.